Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about why many brokers won't survive the squeeze. And actually it boils down to something that happened in January when the DTCC actually requested hundreds of billions of dollars from various different brokers. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, some of you might start by saying, well, hang on Tom, I thought the NSCC only requested $3 billion from Robin Hood. I thought the SEC report revealed that no other brokers experienced a margin call on the 28th of January. Well, I want to play for you this video of the Weeble CEO discussing the DTCC requirements and clearing firms shutting down trading during the last sneeze due to hundreds of billions of dollars being requested. So let's hear what the Weeble CEO had to say. SS are so volatile, DTC has raised that requirement collateral rate to 100%, meaning that for every single dollar that exchanges hands in those stocks, the clearing firm has to send a forward deposit for two whole business days that exact same amount of the notion of the trade. Now, when we're talking about GameStop at $250, $350, billions of shares trading, we're talking about hundreds of billions of dollars that the clearing firm physically has to send in cash to the to the to DTCC to hold there for two whole business days and to be frank the clearing firms are not that well capitalized they can't do that so in order to stop the clearing firm from going out of business they stop the settlement of those shares so right there, we can hear the DTCC change their collateral requirements. On the 28th and 29th of January, they required $1 of collateral for every single dollar of GameStop that was traded. And therefore, because there was millions and millions and millions of shares traded, the DTCC was requesting hundreds of billions of dollars. So first I want to look at Robinhood's $3 billion margin requirement or $3 billion margin call and work backwards and figure out just how much cash would have been requested by the DTCC during the January sneeze. So obviously Robinhood received a $3 billion margin requirement or margin call. Let's assume at that time GameStop was trading for around $300 per share, which I think is fairly reasonable considering GameStop saw upwards of $483 per share. $3 billion divided by $300 a share gives you around 10 million shares that was traded in Robinhood during that point, which resulted in the DTCC's $3 billion margin call. If we take it up on the 26th of January, we can see that there was 175 million shares of GameStop that was traded on this one day. The price ranged between somewhere between $88 and $150 per share, giving a midpoint of somewhere around $120 per share. 175 million shares times $120 per share is around $21 billion that would have been requested from the DTCC on this one day. Now again on the 27th of January we saw volume of around 91 million shares and a trading midpoint of somewhere around $315 per share. It had a high of $380 and a low of $249. 91 million shares times by around $315 per share gives a DTCC capital requirement of around 28, nearly $29 billion. So in the course of just two days for GameStop, that was around $50 billion requested by the DTCC, and that doesn't even include AMC as well. Now, I think what happened on the morning of the 28th of January is that obviously the NSCC and the DTCC called Robinhood to make that $3 billion margin requirement. They also started calling multiple other brokerages and multiple other clearing firms requesting all of that money, when the clearing firms just decided that actually it's way easier for us to turn off the buy button. But I think during the next run up and hopefully the squeeze which hopefully will occur this January, I don't think turning off the buy button is going to be an option once again because they've already played that card and it did not work out well for those brokers and for those clearing firms. And therefore, I think that during the next run up, the DTCC are going to slightly change their strategy and not request as much margin collateral. Either that or many of these brokers and clearing firms are going to go under and they will not survive the squeeze. I think either many of these brokers are going to go under and will not survive the squeeze or the SEC and the DTCC will have to work together to halt trading on AMC and GameStop entirely 
not just turning off the buy button, but halting the trading while they investigate. You may remember from my video the other week about these non-regulatory halts where the SEC can halt trading on a stock for up to 10 days while they investigate. This I think could be the only way that many of these brokers and clearing firms actually survive the next run up and survive the squeeze. With Moomoo's latest promotion, you can get your hands on a free share of AMC on top of the usual five free shares valued up to $3,500 each. Moomoo is also an excellent commission-free broker that doesn't make its money through payment for order flow. Moomoo and Futu make their money through margin interest and payment fees, and therefore you don't have to worry about your trades going through sketchy dark pools or being given to Citadel. Moomoo also has excellent technical indicators and even publishes daily short selling volume on top of more important information. All you have to do to get your free share of AMC and your five free shares valued up to $3,500 each is to sign up with Moomoo using the link below and make your first deposit. If you deposit $100, you get two free shares and the AMC, but if you can deposit $2,000, then you get all five free shares and the AMC as well. And this I think is why it's already over and it's already been over for some time. This post from Reddit says I don't understand why anyone freaks out about anything at this point. The squeeze is inevitable. It's over. It's been over already for months. It's now in the hands of the FBI, the Department of Justice, the DTCC, the SEC, the big hedgies and the brokers. They're all trying to come to some form of agreement in which they can allow the squeeze to happen and they can allow these hedgies to be bankrupted or forced to cover all of their short positions without destroying the wider market at the same time. The SEC and everybody else here is going to try and do anything they can to save those major banks and potentially bail out those major banks and do anything they can to save the wider market while forcing these hedges to cover and effectively bankrupting them. He said, why would they have all of these major players like the Department of Justice, FBI, SEC, DTCC and others in this one security play unless they already know what's going to happen? They've been insulating themselves and the market the best they can for months in preparation for the 10D exchange. He says small and medium hedges will be scorched and big banks will likely get financial assistance, aka a bailout. He says, I do believe one big player will be erased for public perception. His guess is Bank of America, which is coincidentally the prime broker for Citadel. He says there's no way this isn't going to happen as everything is so out of control. We can just see the volatility in the market recently and this is all being caused by the hedgies being maxed out on their leverage and basically having no room to wiggle. He says just relax, be prepared and have a plan for the cash ahead of time and don't get overly greedy. They will not allow this to run to $500,000 to a million dollars per share number and pay it all out. Again, I think this is slightly subjective as I do believe there could be one or two trades at these high numbers, but obviously because of the distribution, most of the trades are going to take place at lower numbers. He says, know what number you need to do whatever you like with, whenever you like, and execute the play. Now, for me, there's been a few signs recently that suggest to me that the squeeze is coming. But what are those few signs that I've been seeing recently? Firstly, is a combined tweet here from Boss Blunts and another poster here as well. Firstly, it says, just so you know, CNBC is now running ads that claim Melvin closed their short position. Why would you spend money to convince the public that Melvin closed its short position? If it did close, good for them, but why are they running ads? You can see here on Twitter, there's a promoted sign from Squawkbox saying that Melvin Capital closed out of its GameStop position. Clearly, they're trying to get as many people as they possibly can to close out of their GameStop and AMC positions while they still have the chance. And the combined part here from Boss Blunt suggests that several people in his think tank have been contacted by Fidelity, asking them to sell their AMCE and SNDL shares. Clearly, it's not only CNBC, but it's also the brokers themselves like Fidelity that are trying to get people to sell their AMC 
whatever the cost. To me, this suggests that they are very, very close to the end and they're trying to do anything they can to reduce their overall financial burden. The second thing that suggests it to me is how Bitcoin has been behaving over the last few weeks. It first fell from around 52k down to around 47. It then dropped again to around 44, it dropped again to around 42, and it just recently dropped the other day to around $40,000 per Bitcoin. This to me that hedges are taking hundreds of millions and hundreds of billions of dollars out of Bitcoin trying to do anything they can to free up any remaining liquidity to meet those margin calls for another few days. We can see that Bitcoin has experienced some of the highest trading volume it's ever seen over the last few days, trading around $88 billion worth of Bitcoin in a 24 hour period. Again, this to me suggests that hedges are doing pretty much anything they can to liquidate their holdings of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to free up liquidity for those final few days. And the next thing that keeps me confident for January is somebody here called Block. Drain King asking Al if he's still confident that the squeeze happens in January. Al replied obviously saying yes he does believe the squeeze still happens in January and I think this is because of the massive amount of call options that are in the money and also just the massive open interest in call options for the 21st of January 2022. In my video tomorrow I've stumbled across some brilliant pieces of due diligence around these call options that are in the money or at the money obviously not call options that are massively out of the money and how they will impact the next AMC and GameStop run up. And finally for today I've got a bit more confirmation about the GameStop and Loopring partnership and the interesting thing is that GameStop at one point actually explored the acquisition of Loopring. He says here Barons has reported that a source familiar with the matters stated that GameStop explored an acquisition of decentralized financial company Loopring. GameStop ultimately withdrew amid logistical concerns related to Loopring's operations in China. So GameStop don't believe that Loopring is a bad company and they don't want to work with them. They just knew it would be logistically difficult because Loopring is based in China and China have so many different legal regulations and laws. And therefore it's most likely just easier for GameStop to work with Loopring instead of acquiring them flat out. It says when Barron's questioned the source familiar with matters at GameStop about the Loopring speculation, the source stated that GameStop actually explored an acquisition of Loopring, but ultimately withdrew from talks amid logistical concerns related to Loopring's operations in China. And interestingly, back in November, the Loopring CEO, Daniel Wang, stated that he could not comment on that when asked by a reporter about the decentralized finance company's rumored deal with GameStop. Now obviously CEOs can't comment on things when there is a deal ongoing or there is a deal in the works. Back in November, Loopring had already announced that they were working with somebody for an NFT platform. And therefore it's likely that in November, Loopring were working with GameStop and therefore that's why the CEO could not comment on it when questioned. It says GameStop withdrawing from acquiring Loopring does not prevent them from utilizing Loopring's ZK Rollup Layer 2 technology to power their NFT marketplace. The GameStop NFT marketplace and the Loopring NFT marketplace were supposed to be released in quarter four. I imagine there's just some final testing before they release it either sometime this month or sometime in February. Guys, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think about the Weeble CEO interview and whether you think that many brokers will or won't survive the squeeze. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.